I'm going to walk you through the structural levels of organization in the muscle, starting from the whole muscle and then walking you all the way down to the myofilaments, actin and myosin. So this is our whole muscle. Whole muscles are wrapped in a layer of connective tissue called the epimyceum which is a dense irregular connective tissue. Then each whole muscle contains many individual bundles. Those bundles are called fascicles and they are wrapped in a layer of connective tissue called the perimyceum, which is also dense irregular connective tissue. The fascicles are full of their own individual bundles and those bundles are the muscle fibers, which are actually muscle cells. You also might hear them called myocytes because myo means muscle, site means cell. And they are wrapped in a layer of connective tissue called the endomyceum, which is a realer connective tissue. So it's a loose connective tissue, whereas the other ones are dense. All right, now because these muscle fibers are cells, underneath the layer of connective tissue, underneath the endomyceum, is going to be the cell membrane. In the muscle, we call the cell membrane the sarcolemma. And then in every muscle fiber, we once again have even more, even smaller rods. Those rods are the myofibrils. Now because we are now below the cellular level, we no longer have layers of connective tissue because you don't have layers of connective tissue inside of a cell. Now these myofibrils have many smaller individual units within them. Those individual units are called the sarcomeres. So you can kind of think of a myofibril like a train and the sarcomere like a train car because all those sarcomeres lined up end to end is what makes the myofibril. The sarcomere is called the contractile unit because when a muscle is contracting, the two ends of the sarcomere are getting closer together and that is what makes the whole muscle shorter is all those individual sarcomeres contracting. And the reason that they're able to contract is because they are organized collections of the myofilaments, actin and myosin. Actin and myosin are the contractile proteins. Now I'm not going to go too much into the anatomy of the sarcomere itself. I have another video about that. It is called contracted versus relaxed sarcomeres. I'll put that in the description. For now, I think it's enough to know that the sarcomere has actin, which is the thin filament, and myosin, which is the thick filament. All right, so that's all pretty easy, pretty straightforward in my opinion. But you don't want to just walk away at this point and think like, oh, I'm good, like that was easy. Because understanding is not the same as remembering. Just because you've understood what I said does not mean you're going to remember it later. So my advice to you is you want to take the time to draw out something like this. You don't need to be an artist. The point is, is you're just trying to visually show yourself the information so that you can recall it later. So first, you want to make sure that you're at the point where you can take a diagram like this and explain it to somebody. Like if you could explain this to somebody that's not in your class, that is a good place to start. And then you want to take it a step further and you want to be able to recreate from memory this very simple diagram. And the reason is, is that because when you get into the physiology end of this, when you're reading, if you can't remember what or where these things are or how big they are or how they relate to the other parts of the muscle, you're going to have a harder time understanding. You want to think of it like you are trying to memorize characters and settings so that you can understand stories later. Also, little hint, myofibrils, myofilaments. The reason I underlined the B and the L is because the myofibril is the bigger one. 
The myofilament is the littler one. All right, that's all the advice and information I have for you today. I hope it was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.